So here we go. So 1889, an 18xx game in the series, originated by Francis Tresham's 1829, set in Shikoku, Japan. The rules are similar to 1830, but on a smaller map and more terrain heavy map, as you can see there. So what are you guys looking at first before we get started? So we have the main board and the main board is essentially divided into two main parts. On the bottom part here, we have obviously the map. This is where we're going to build rail lines for the various companies. There are cities, there are towns, and by towns, I mean towns, doinks, dits, whistle stops, pips, however you want to call them, that's all a town, all right? Uh, there are also empty hexes out here, which are just normal uh, hexes, and anywhere you see these mountainous regions here that show an 80 yen mark, that's going to be a cost for building in that hex, but for the most part, there is one exception, but for the most part, these are empty hexes, all right? There is a dividend track, up here, which is kind of divided into three spaces around the board just to make room for everything there. Then there is a chart with various information based on player count, the cert limit, the initial starting capital or our starting cash per player, and if any of the private companies are removed. So that's pretty much what we have here. And also I should point out that there are off-board locations, okay? These red locations, and there's only a little bit of red here, but this also, and this one. So on this map, there are three off-board locations like this. More on those, obviously, later. Now, up there on the top-hand side of the board, we have, obviously, the stock market. So as you can see there. The stock market tracks share value for each of the rail companies when they get started and as they progress along during the game. Then there is a par value track down here. This is going to be the initial value of shares of the respective companies. Then we have the open market. I'm probably going to be referencing this as the bank pool going forward. This is going to be where shares of companies go when sold by owning players. Then we have the round tracker right there. Are we in a stock round? How many operating rounds do we have, et cetera. Then on the far right hand side of the board, we have the train offer there. So those are going to show the available trains for purchase. So that is the main board there. Now off board, over on the right hand side here, we have the seven company charters that are in the game. They are divided or just for uh, visual reasons. There are two stations for these companies, one station for this, and three stations for those over there. Then in between all of that is the company share certificates, so the initial offer right here, and each of the companies has a total of 100% of shares, 20% being for the president's share, and then 10% for each additional share for a total of 100%. Then just for the beginning of the game, we have the private companies. Then off, by, uh, off board, and you can kind of see our personal cash here, but we have a couple of different banks out here off board. These are predetermined based upon the player count. <clears throat> then also off board, we have track tiles, and the colors are going to signify the progression of the track going from yellow to green to russet, or we'll probably call it brown, to also gray. Now there are no gray tiles in this game, but there are gray printed tiles on the board, which will not upgrade as we go along in the game. And last but not least, as I mentioned, starting cash. That's everybody's player tableau. So that's everything that you're looking at, and of course, there's Davis, Tuskless, he had an accident, don't worry about it, but Davis, which is our priority deal marker, all right? So, how do you play the game? The game is played in two alternating phases. There is a stock round where we're going to, wait for it, buy and sell shares of stock in the various companies. Then there are going to be operating rounds. The operating rounds are going to be when the train companies actually operate to actually play the game. All right. The game will alternate between a stock round and either one, two, or three operating rounds and will continue doing so until either the bank breaks or runs out of money or a player goes bankrupt. The goal of the game is cold hard cash. 
It's to have the most valuable personal wealth, which consists of cash on hand, as well as any shares that you may own in your personal portfolio. We as players are going to be buying stocks you know, shares of stock of railroad companies. And when enough of a company's shares have been bought by the players, that railroad company is quote unquote floated or comes to life, so to speak. During a stock round, we're gonna be buying, those sell, uh, share, buying and selling those shares of stock and the share price might be affected by this. This is also the main time that players will be using their own personal money in the game is during the stock round. There is one exception during the operating rounds, but a lot of times that's not necessarily a good thing. Now, during those operating rounds, in share value order, so we're gonna have markers out here on the board, the train companies will operate. They're going to be building or laying track out here on the board. They're gonna be placing stations so that they can operate, and then they'll be buying trains and operating those trains. They do that to generate cash for themselves and or their shareholders. Multiple players may be shareholders of a given company, but only the player who has the president's share, which is the majority shareholder of a company, makes all the decisions for that company. The president, as I said, is the majority shareholder in the company. However, they're also the ones responsible for that company. And if it finds itself without a train in which to operate, the president may be on the hook to pay out of their own pocket to purchase a train for that company if their company cannot afford one. And that is the one instance in which you're going to be using your personal money during an operation is to come out of pocket to buy your company a train if necessary. All right. The money that the trains generate when they operate will either be paid out to the shareholders, which has a positive effect on the share value, i.e. it goes up in value, or the company can withhold the money, but it has a negative, ef negative effect on the share value, i.e. it goes down in share value. The game will begin with an initial auction that involves the players using their personal cash to purchase and to auction off these private companies, which will generate some revenue for the owning player, and maybe <clears throat> later on the owning railroad company, and usually has some sort of rule breaker or special ability on it. After that initial auction, players then have the initial stock round, followed by an operating round, then the game continues until one of those game end conditions happens. And again, whoever has the most valuable personal wealth is the winner. So that's kind of big picture what it is we're going to be doing here in an 18xx game across the board, specifically 1889 or 100 years pre-Taylor Swift. <laughs> All right, so the way I'm going to teach this right now is I'm going to go over the actual order in which we're going to play the game and then detail each of those steps as we go along. So what does that mean? We're going to start off with explaining the initial stock round and the opening auction, okay? All right, so each player is going to get some tokens to use to signify their bids on the private companies. Now we're gonna use the, the company tokens, so that's why you're going to see that everybody has some and you'll just have to take my word that I have some as well. And these are just, hey, I'm yellow for right now for the initial mm -hmm. auction, all right? The privates are offered in ascending cost values and you'll notice that they are lettered A, B, there's a C, take my word for it, D, there's an E, F, and G. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of those private companies right now. So a little bit up close right here. So it shows the letter, the name of the private company, the special rule breaker that it may have. It shows the opening price of that private company, and it shows the revenue that it will pay to either the owning player at the beginning of the game, and possibly later on, the revenue that it will generate for the owning company if it's sold into a company, okay? So, opening value, how much it pays you. Awesome, good deal. But that doesn't mean what you're necessarily going to pay for it because starting with the first player, each player may, in turn order, either, let me put these back out, like so, they may either purchase just flat out face value, the lowest value company out there. So A, you could pay 20 bucks to the bank and own that company, okay? Or 
they could bid on a higher priced private. They must raise the previous bid, if any, by at least five bucks or five yen. Well, I'll probably use dollars, bucks, whatever, okay? Or pass. Those are your three options. So on my turn, I might say, okay, I'm gonna place a bid out there and show that Edward has put a bid out here. The minimum bid is always $5 less or more than what the existing bid is. So in this case, it would be 65 bucks. So all that signifies, and I have to have the cash set aside in which to be able to do it, all right? So everybody starts with, in a five player game, 390 bucks or 390 yen. So, I signify I'm going to bid on that. Then it would go on to Jess. Jess says, you know what, I'm going to bid on this one, bid 35. Then Andrew might do something like this. Then Ka'an says, you know what, I also like that. He increases the bid. We're going to go left to right on these to signify. So the first bid is 5 yen higher, so 65. Second bid is now 70. And then if Alan comes in and puts on the same one, that would be 75. Mm -hmm. Then it comes back to me, I could either bid on another one like so, or I could what we call pull the plug. If I pull the plug, here's what happens. And you know what, better yet, let's say it's like this. Jeff says, you know what, I'm happy with that, I pass. And we'll go there, and then Khan says, you know what, I'm gonna pull the plug for whatever reason. So if he does so, that means he is going to buy this for face value. He takes that into his personal area, his tableau, so he now owns that, paying the 25, or I'm sorry, the $20 out of his pocket. At that point, all the players that are on the next available uh, private then have a personal auction that goes on in perpetuity or they run out of money or one of them passes. The highest bid, so the current bid, so 35, that was 40. I'm the highest bid, it now goes back to Jeff's, Increments of five, she could say, you know what, I'm just going to jump it up to 60 bucks. And I said, okay, you're crazy, you're insane, <laughs> I pass. She pays 60 bucks to the bank, she takes that, I take, we take our markers off, then we go to the next one. This one only has one player on it. So in this case, Andrew would pay 45 bucks yeah. to the bank, he owns that. But now we reach something without a bid on it. So what happens at that point? We start all over. These remain as they are, but then we start putting out tokens again. So you can place tokens, obviously it will only be on these four. At any point, someone could pull the plug again to be able to do this, etc., etc., until somebody pulls the plug, and then we start the auction again, yada, yada, yada. Now, if, let me go ahead and talk about this. If all players pass, and there are companies still on remain for sale, private companies operate. Awesome. That means if you own one of these privates, you get paid whatever the revenue is. And then we do it again. Then we start back over. Basically, other people are making money and you're not if you don't own a private, so you probably don't want that to happen. I digress. If this one is unowned, it reduces the cost of that by five pounds. So if we all pass for whatever reason. If it gets down to zero, the priority player, whoever is the first player, has to take it for free. Shucky darn. All right. Then begin another round of selling the remaining privates until they're all auctioned off. After the last private is sold, the player to the left of the last purchaser, or whoever bought that last one, begins the initial stock round. They get priority deal. All right. Shares, I, uh, that's pretty much it for the initial auction. Are there any questions about the initial auction? Nope. No? Nope. All right. So that's how. So all, of, all seven of those will be owned between the five of us before we move on. At that point, we then move into the initial stock round. The difference between an initial stock round and a regular stock round is one significant rule. Shares cannot be sold until, that are bought until the next stock round. So if you buy something, you're buying it until the next stock round. That's the only difference between the initial stock round and a regular stock round. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about what goes on in a stock round after all of these have been bought. <clears throat> you may buy one certificate and sell as many as you like in one action. You may either buy then sell or you may sell then buy. Either or, it's up to you in a single action. If you choose to buy share, a share, I should say, 
if you buy it here in the initial offering, you're going to pay the par price to the bank. Okay, the par price is going to be wherever the president started the company value. If it's here, you're buying from, it's in this. If it ends up in the open market, which what happens there, somebody has bought a share previously from either here or there, and they have sold it, and now it's in the open market or the bank pool. The difference between that is here, it's this price. Here, it's whatever the current share price is for that company. Subtle, but significantly different. It could be cheaper or it could be more expensive than what the per price is. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. You are limited to the certificate limit or, as we're going to reference, the paper limit. All right. That paper limit is 12 shares in a five-player game. Now, now it's where I want to bring your attention to these. The difference between a president's share and a regular share. This is one certificate or one piece of paper. It is worth two shares, but it is one piece of paper. So that certificate limit, this counts as one, even though it's two shares, just like a single share is worth one piece of paper. Privates are also one piece of paper. If you own them, you are allowed to own a maximum of 12 pieces of paper. There are some rules about stuff down here, but we'll cover that later. Before the general rule, 12 pieces of paper in a five player game. This is one piece of paper. I'm driving that point home, but I feel like it's an important distinction to make, okay? All right. Now, the first player to purchase a share of a company is starting that new company, all right? You're gonna follow these steps and therefore, yeah, follow these steps. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to set the par value. So I say I'm going to start the Awa Railroad or the Red Company. Okay, the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to take the markers, I'm going to set the par value. Let's say I set the par value, I say it's 70 bucks. Okay, we're then going to exactly as Alan just did, we're also going to set the actual stock value at $70 because that's what I parted at. I must pay out of my pocket 140 bucks to be able to start that company. Why? Because I have to buy the president's share. The president's share is two shares. Par price, 70 bucks, 70 times two. Okay, that makes sense. So what does that mean? That means this company is gonna come up over here. I now own this piece of paper, so it's worth two certificates. And whatever it's worth, whenever I decide to sell it or the end of the game, that's going to be what it's, that's adds to my personal wealth, all right? So the next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to physically take the company charter. Then we're going to place a whole bunch of tokens out on the following locations. So as I said, we have the par value. We have the stock market, stock market. If a previous company was already in that location, meaning when I set the par price at 70, that then goes underneath the existing one. And the reason for that is operating order. It always goes top to bottom. Mm -hmm or uh, so you guys can see, top to bottom. And the reason for that is whoever was there first operates before companies that newly joined that box is a good way to think of it, okay? Then, like I said, you're going to take the company, I'm sorry, we're gonna also place one down here at the on the dividend track. Then we're going to take the home station token, okay? So it says where it is, that actually is marked here on the board. We're gonna flip it off upside down and put it off to the side because until this company actually operates it doesn't actually get to place its home token it's just a visual reminder of us of where that company is and it's about to start it's out here it's not in the general offering anymore okay all right then any other station tokens go on to the company charter as so so you'll notice that this company only has two tokens it's home station and one other token all right now, normally, you cannot own more than 60% of a company, which means 60%, that would consist of 20, 30, 40, 50, and last but not least, you are maxed, usually, at 60% of a company, okay? There are, there's one exception to that. We'll talk about that later. However, Companies begin to operate or they're floated once 50% of their initial offering shares are sold, even if there are shares here in the open market, okay? 
Once it's floated, whether it's by myself or between any of the players, once that fifth share is bought, the company then is floated and it immediately receives money, which is 10 times the par value. The par value is 70 bucks. That means the company gets 70 bucks into its company treasury like so, and that is the money that that company has now to operate. Note, company money is not Edward's money. Edward's money is not company money. Those are two very distinctive things. Make sure we keep those separate, okay? All right. So any questions on floating a company, all right? No? All right, cool. Then the company is going to begin to operate the next operating round that it's floated. Again, floated five shares, okay? However, if you are not the first player to purchase shares of a company, you simply take a 10% share and place it in your personal tableau. So let's say I bought the president's share and Alan wants to invest in my company because he knows I'm going to do a hell of a job uh, in running this company. He would then place it right here in front of him as if that were empty. We're just keeping it up there for, for mm -hmm. show. All right, he gets that. Now, if it's purchasing again from the initial stock offering, how much does he pay? He pays 70 bucks because that's what the par value is. If he bought this share from out here in the open market or the bank pool and the current value, okay, let's be realistic. <laughs> we're $100, he would pay $100 to the bank for that share. Okay, this is what's called a fully capitalization game. And what I mean by that is all the money for shares gets paid to the bank. It does not get paid to the company. There are other games that do that, but we're not going to worry about that for today. So wherever he buys this from, here, he pays that much. If it's from here, he pays that much. Cool? Cool. All right. Easy enough. Yeah, we'll go ahead and let you keep that for now. That's buying shares. Any question on buying shares? Nope. All right. Selling shares. Calculate all the certificates sold by the active player at the current price, then drop one level for each share sold. What does that mean? Let's say I want to share, I, I want to sell these two shares during the stock round. What happens? I then place them out here in the bank pool. How much do I get? I get 100 bucks per share, so that's 200 bucks to my pocket because I sold the shares, not the company. This then will drop two spots because I sold two shares. Mm -hmm. Okay, easy enough. Now, once a player has show, sold a share of a company, that stock round, that player may not buy another share of that company until after the next set of operating rounds. No more than 50% than of a company's shares can be in the open market or in the bank pool at all, so 50% max can ever be here. If there's 50%, can't sell anymore. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. And this next part is really, really important. Let's say I had these three shares. This president share, I cannot sell. You cannot sell the last two shares of a company unless another player owns at least two shares. And then what happens? They immediately become the president, meaning they physically take the charter, they take the treasury, they take any trains that company may own, and they physically get it over into their tableau. Not to em emphasize that I would do that to you, Alan, but you get the idea, <laughs> all right? And they become the president. Uh, they're in charge of that company going forward. I still might have a share left if I wish to, or I can sell it all the way down if I want, but only if another player has at least two shares to become president, okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, president's share can never go into the bank pool. It's always going to change hands in mm -hmm. that case, okay? All right. Now, at the end of a stock round, we're going to adjust one level physically up for all sold out companies. If a company has all of its shares sold, there's nothing here and there's nothing here. It says the words, wait for it, sold out. It physically will move up as a little bonus for being completely sold out. That's awesome, congratulations, all right? Now. A couple last things, and I'm going to briefly go over this. I'm not going to talk about strategy. You'll notice that there are two colored areas down here in the stock market. There is the yellow area. The yellow area, the company shares do not count towards certificate limit or paper limit. Paper limit is 12 shares. If you have shares of a company that's in here, they no longer count against that 12. However, the moment the share price comes out of that, the next stock round, you they now count towards their share limit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
However, down here in the orange area, you may exceed the 60% limit for a company. So if your company is down here, you can own 100% of that company if you want, or 70 or 80 or whatever. The moment it comes out of that, starting with the next stock round, you have to drop down to 60% though, however, okay? All right, that's all I'm going to talk about for that as far as that goes on the stock market. That's selling stock. Any questions whatsoever about stock rounds? We're halfway home, that's the stock market side of this. That is here. Now we're gonna talk about operating rounds after I get a drink of tea, all right? Any questions here locally? No. 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 I was hoping that'd draw out a little bit. All right, here we go. <laughs> all right, all right. So operating rounds. The number of operating rounds is dictated by the phase that we are in. And you'll notice that the trains up here also are color-coded to the number of operating rounds. It also shows a little handy dandy little chart here that shows how things work and it shows the operating round or the color. However, the number of operating rounds only changes after a stock round. Meaning, if we buy out all the two trains and then somebody buys a three train, which I'll talk about all this later, we do not actually go into two operating rounds until after the stock round, then we come back and then we have two operating rounds, then a stock round, and when we get into brown after the stock round, three operating rounds, et cetera, et cetera. So once we begin the operating rounds though, we follow these next step in a very precise order. First, pay the privates. What does that mean? Well, the owner, whether it's the person or the company, which can happen. So for instance, if this company owns that private, that company will get $15 into its coffers. If I own the private, I get 15 bucks into my pocket, okay? So we're gonna pay the privates first and foremost. Then the operating companies act in descending stock order rightmost, then topmost. Note the stock values, they're diagonal. So for instance, if that is there, and that is there. They are both at 110. Rightmost first, then topmost. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. In this case, if it were something like this and they're stack stacked up like so, red will operate, then pink, and then purple. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the operating order and then so on and so forth like so. So what happens on a company's turn? It follows the next steps. It lays or upgrades one track out here on the board, then it may place a token, then it operates trains and calculates its revenue, then it pays or withholds dividends, then adjusts the company share price, and then and only then may it purchase a train or possibly multiple trains. Or by may, I mean must purchase a train possibly, all right? Now let's break all those steps down one by one. The president of a given company makes all the decision for that company. I cannot stress that enough. People can suggest, but the, company, the president has ultimately makes the decision. Here we go, private companies. Companies can purchase private companies at any time during their operating round, but, they're only, uh, but only during uh, phases three and four. Not allowed during phase two and during phase five or at the beginning of phase five, privates close. So that's not gonna happen then. The purchase price is exactly, and I will bring this back over here. If this company were to buy this, the purchase price is minimum 50% of that up to double the value. So meaning 25 to 100 bucks. Out of the company coffers to my personal cash, whatever the president decides, I'm the president, I decide how much it pays me. Okay, easy enough, okay? All right, as I mentioned, private companies close in phase five. However, there is one exception. The Uno Takamatsu Ferry, if it's owned by a player, this does not close for the whole game. If it's owned by a company, it closes, as does everything else. Other companies, and we'll go over this before we start the game, may close when their special ability is activated as well. All right. So that's private companies and paying the privates and then may buy them in at any point from the company that's currently operating, okay? 99% of the time, the, person, the president is going to buy their own private companies in, okay? That may, usually. So now let's go ahead and talk about laying tiles. So as I mentioned earlier, there are, in this game, 
three different colors of tiles. They match the phase that we're in. Also matches the number of operating rounds. It will always go yellow to green to russet, and then possibly, well, in this game, there's technically no gray tiles, but then to gray, all right? You get to lay a single green tile or upgrade a single tile to the next color based upon the current phase. Again, yellow, green, gray, uh, russet, etc. It must be a legal track lay, okay? So let's go ahead and talk, let's go ahead and start here with my home station. So on my turn, after my company is floated, I may lay a track, okay? If I choose to lay a track like so, that's a legal track lay. What defines a legal track lay? No directions to an off non-hex, meaning, see these? These aren't hexes. So what I cannot do is something like that to where it's pointing off board, okay? That is never allowed. Also, if upgrading, you must honor existing track lays. So if this company is like so, then moving into, let's say we're into the green phase and I wish, or somebody else possibly wishes to upgrade this, that track lay must be honored, okay? Meaning what I cannot do is, let's see, well, I couldn't do that because that's an illegal one, but you get the idea. In addition to that, let me give another example here, if I may. If I choose to lay this like so, that is a legal track lay. You'll notice that it does not connect to this. Well, it never connected to that to begin with. That's okay. However, if I chose to do this, at this point, that will forever be connected. It must remain connected. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. Is that clear? All right, cool. Now, as I said, it does not have to match <laughs> other track tiles unless the track tile you're replacing already matched it. So again, if I had done something along the lines of this to begin with, then when it's upgraded, if I replace it with this track tile, it's honoring that existing track tile. It just now has more options, like so. All right, cool, easy enough, right? All right. Now, private companies A and C, while owned by a player, they prevent any companies from laying track tiles in the hex the private company occupies. Again, we're going to go over what the specifics are on these, but there are a couple of track tiles that cannot be laid slash upgraded as long as those private companies are held by personal players, and Alan and I will walk everybody through that when we get started, okay? Tiles laid in an empty green, light green hex are usually going to be yellow, meaning here, okay? Um, you only have to pay the terrain cost for the initial tile. So you see all these $80 going through mountains, holes through mountains, if you will. To be able to do so, you're the one blasting through the mountains. So it makes sense that you're the one having to do the heavy lifting, right? But however, once that tile is already laid, so for instance, if we did something along the lines of this and that company paid that $80 out of its coffers, Whenever this track tile gets upgraded, you already blew the holes through the mountains. You don't have to do that again. So therefore you don't have to pay an additional cost in which to do so. However, Coda Hero, and help me out where, uh, thank you, Coda Hero. Here, this is an exception to that rule. It costs 80 bucks for each upgrade. Okay, as does, how do you pronounce that? Kochi? Kochi. We'll go with Kochi. These two do cost for upgrades every time. Okay, but notice they are not terrain related. These terrain tiles only cost the first time you lay it. And by you, I mean your company. Comes out of the company money because the company's operating, right? Right, all right. Now the next step is laying tokens. Let's go ahead and put out a legal route here. And let's say it does something along the lines of like so, and maybe, like so here. All right, after you have laid your one track, if you wish, or upgraded your one track, if you wish, it's either or or neither, you, your company may then pay the cost to lay a single token in a city that the company can legally reach, meaning it's not tokened out. So what does that mean? Well, indulge me, and let's say that this had a route out here, and that company had already 
placed a token there. And you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and draw this out so you guys can show me, if you will. Bear with me so I can give a better example. I need one more. We don't have any more. Mm, I'm not going to bother. All right. Uh, here we go. The red company is tokened out. It is blocked from going past this station. Okay, so we could not, if this were finished all the way over, it could not indulge me and let's say this were connected all the way through. This red company cannot reach this because it is blocked out. It is tokened out. However, if this were up, ooh, bad example, sorry. Nope, I'll get there yet. Help me out, find it. gonna get stuck, it's got a three. Yep, there we go, I got it, here. There. Oh, never mind. Uh, I give up. All right. <laughs> it, Here. It, yeah. it, let's say yeah, this were a else. legal track lay. It is not, and I'm not going to fight this anymore. <laughs> if this were a legal track lay like so, it has an open station. That means people can freely, other companies can freely travel through, which means if this were connected all the way through, red then could station here. Or... If this were just flat out open like so, it could choose the station right there. No harm, no foul. Does that make sense? Yep. Oh my mm -hmm. God, that was way harder than it should have been. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The cost is 40 bucks to lay a token. You can lay exactly one token on a given turn for that company operating. Okay, even if it has multiple tokens available, you can lay one token in a given turn. Okay. And also, a company can have a single token in a given city. So, that is not allowed. You can't do that. There's no reason for that to ever happen. You were already stationed in that area. You're good to go. All right. In a starting city for a railroad that is not yet operated, the company cannot use the last token space. Meaning, let's say, going back to our example, red had gone out here. And I token say there, that's okay, that's legit. But you'll notice that this space is now reserved for green, meaning if the yellow company were to come out here and have track and whatever, it cannot use that because that is reserved for the green company for when it operates only there. And you can see the other home starting stations for the other companies. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, that's it for tokens. Now let's go on to the meat of the game, which is running train, or at least partially the meat of the game running trains. A train route consists of a line of track joining multiple revenue locations, meaning towns, cities, and off-board locations, okay? At least one of the cities along that route must contain that company's station marker. For me to be able to consider this a route, it has to have my station, meaning uh, if this were connected all the way from here to there, and there's no red station there, that is not a legal route. It does not include a red station, okay, for the red company. Off-board locations, these red locations, as I mentioned earlier, um, these are terminus locations, meaning they do not go through. You'll notice that this here does not connect. It is a dead end, meaning operating a train, a train begins or ends its route, at a red location, if you wish, it cannot go through a red location. Now, we're gonna go through a whole lot of permissive and impermissive things here, but it's actually not as bad as it sounds. A route can begin or end at a town, at a city, or an off-board location. It can pass through a city containing one of the company's station markers. I realize I'm being a little redundant on this, but again, for thoroughness, it can pass through a town or a city with an open station marker location, meaning this can move through an open station and continue on. That's legit. It can use multiple entirely separate lines of track on the same tile, meaning could go this way, could go this way, could go this way, could go this way. That's legit. And it may enter an unblocked town or city from one direction and exit in any other connected direction. Again, Enter this direction, exit that direction, or come in this way, go out that way, etc. That's what it can do. A route cannot cross the same hex edge more than once. So what I, indulge me and let's say this were connected all the way around, what it cannot do is like come back here and then come back and hit the same hex edge. 
it cannot use the same piece of track on a track tile more than once, no matter how small the track section may be. So you see this little edge right there? If, that'll be a good example for when we get here, we'll do like so. There we go, let's say that we're built out like that. So again, it cannot use the same piece of track on a track tile more than once, no matter how small the track section may be, meaning it cannot come out, and if this were connected all the way around, it cannot come back like so. It cannot pass through a city which doesn't have an open station marker location and doesn't contain the company station marker. So what does that mean? That means the yellow company can reach the city, it cannot go, a legal route cannot go through that city because it is stationed out or tokened out, it is blocked. It can reach, but not continue past, okay? It cannot run to or through the same town or city more than once. So again, you couldn't come back around even, you just can't hit the same tile twice, basically. Then, it also cannot reverse direction on a simple track tile i.e. it cannot reverse direction at a junction or a switch. Meaning, it cannot, if a company were traveling this way on this, it cannot uh, mm -hmm. and you know hit the e-brake and flip it around, <laughs> and it cannot do that. There are some tractile sets that you can. That is not 1889, we are not gonna worry about that. And a big thanks to JC Lawrence for that actually detailed on what you can and cannot do for the routes. Now, the routes of multiple trains run by the same company during an operating round must not share or reuse any of the track. What does that mean? If one company, if a company has multiple two trains, let's say, it can run there, that's legit, and it can run there, that's legit. It entailed, it, it incorporates a station marker for that company and it did not use the same track. That's different track than that track, it's separated by the city. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. The route can meet or cross at towns or cities provided they use entirely separate sections of track as I just showed. And a route must contain at least two revenue locations. Meaning, this is not a legal route. It has one revenue location, it's hometown. It's gotta go somewhere, okay? If it were to do something along the lines of this, it now has a revenue, that's a legal route. It has two revenue generating locations. Is, is that clear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. The total number and variety of town cities off boards in the route run by the train cannot exceed the range of the type of train specified on the train itself. That was a lot of words for saying that's how many stops it can have, two, three, all the way up to diesels. We'll talk about diesels later. So in our earlier example of this, if I wanted to start here and run to this, that is one, two, three, four. If I wanted to do that all with one train, I would need a four train in which to do it, or possibly a higher train. A five also can do it, and maybe it doesn't run its full length. That is the maximum of stops that it can hit. But that's a stop, that's a stop, that's a stop, that's a stop. It's going to be contiguous stops, so I could choose, if I only had a three train, for instance, if I had a three, I could run one, two, three, or I could run one, two, three, president's choice. You're going to want to run for the higher revenue, but that's <laughs> getting into details, which we'll get into in a little bit. Does that make sense? Is mm -hmm, that clear? Mm -hmm. All right. The phase D gray values in the red hexes are only for diesels that are running there. So if a company has a diesel, they can use the gray. Otherwise, everybody else is using the brown when we get towards the end game. You're going to add up the to total revenue generated by all the company's trains, which now brings us to dividends. Dividends! <laughs> all right. So let's go back. Hand me another two train, please. Uh, better yet, hand me a three. And take all the twos off the board, please. All right. Running a route. Right here, this company has a two train and a three train. Let's go ahead and figure out what the dividends would be for this company, all right? And it you'll notice also that we are currently in the three phase. We know this because there's a three train out there. Uh, train limit is four. I'm allowed four trains per company. This company has two. That's legit. We're good to go. So that company has a two and a three. And let's use this as the example. 
A two train could run from this station to the off board. That's the two train. Then the three train could run from this station to that doink, to that city. That's a three train. And then we add up the revenue. So what would that be? For the two train, because we're in green, which is three, notice we still use the lower value. That'd be 20, or I'm going to cut the zeros off. That's two. And three is five for the two train. Now we do the three train, so that's five, plus we hit this again with the three train, that's eight, that's three, bad example, yeah, that's fine. Um, sorry, that's eight, that's 11, that's 13, or $130 in revenue this company just ge generated, 130 bucks, or $13 per share. So now we have a decision to make. And by we, I mean the president now decides what to do with that revenue generated from the running of those trains. Two options in 1889, pay out to the shareholders, 10% per share, except to the president's share, they get 20% of the total value. So what does that mean? I own 50%. So the total, genera uh, total revenue generated was 130 bucks, meaning I get 65 bucks to my personal cash, okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, in our example, Alan had 10%, he would get 13 bucks, because mm -hmm. 130, not a lot, the zero off, that's 10%, there you go, 13 bucks a share. He would get that. Any shares that are currently owned by the bank are paid by the bank, okay? If it were in the open market or the bank pool, that's actually really good for the company in a sense that the company gets paid this money now. Mm -hmm. So this, here would actually go into the company coffers there, the 13 bucks for that. And if there's more shares, 13 times whatever the amount mm -hmm. of shares that is. So I would get 65, the company would get 13, Allen would get 13, the rest is paid to the bank from the bank so it just stays in the bank, all right? The other option is could withhold the revenue of the company's to the company's treasury. So that 130 bucks it got, hey, congrats. And I apologize, we're using greens as 20s today. <laughs> That's 130 bucks. That money all goes into the company coffers. President's choice on whether it's paid out to the shareholders or to the company. Any questions about your two options on dividends? Okay. But now we have to adjust the share price based on that decision. Okay. The share value goes up or to the right if it paid out. Yay, the value went up, the shareholders are happy because they got paid, so the share value goes up. If, however, the company withheld, the share value goes down because the shareholders are pissed because they didn't get paid. Okay, easy enough. You'll notice the arrows. If it hits this and it can't go left, it goes down. You'll notice here, if it would go up and it can't, or to the right, I say up, but to the right, it goes up physically. Tokens entering an occupied box, again, on the stock market, go on to the bottom of the stack, just as a reminder. So that's paying dividends and adjusting to share value. Next, buying trains. Notice this is the last step. So when a company first floats, it doesn't have a train, which means it operates, but it doesn't generate revenue. Why? Because it doesn't have a train. No mm -hmm. choo choo, my friend. <laughs> right? So, what happens the first time it operates? It's automatically going to go backwards. Why? Because it didn't pay out. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? So, buying trains, let's go over that. The current phase dictates how many trains a company may own. Again, it's shown right here on all of the company charters. A moment. There we go. That's a little bit better. You must always, after this step, own a train if the company has a legal route. The company will own a train, come hell or high water, or the game ends, one or the other, all right? You may buy one or more trains from any mix of the following. The offer for face value, the trains must be bought in order. So all the two trains have to be bought before a single three can be bought, which means all the threes have to be bought before the fours can be bought, etc., etc. There is an exception for the diesel. The diesels are available when the sixes are available. The sixes are available when the last five is bought. The diesels, you can trade in a four, five, or six value or a train and get a $300 discount 
because otherwise it's 1100 bucks out of the company coffers or 800 if you trade in one of those other trains for a diesel. Any questions on that? So have to buy in ascending value. If there's a two train and you want a three, might I suggest buying a two and then you can buy a three or you don't buy a train if you don't want, okay? So buying from the offer at face value, you can buy if there is a train in the bank pool, you can buy it for face value or you can buy from another company for any negotiated price with a minimum of $1 to a maximum of whatever it's got in its coffers. So you see this $80 train, it could conceivably be bought by another company or the, uh, you, you understand what I'm saying. It could, maybe it buys this train from another company for whatever value the president negotiates for that. 99% of the time, it's going to be bought between companies of the same player. And you're going to have a little train swapping and train games going on there. We'll talk about that as we go along in the game itself. A company may not voluntarily discard or scrap a train to make space for a new train, because you'll notice as we go on, you may get what's called train locked, meaning you cannot purchase a train because you are at your limit. You cannot voluntarily discard a train. Also, I want to point out that companies never sell trains. Companies only buy trains, either from other companies or from the bank pool or from the initial offering, okay? They never sell trains. Excess trains due to a phase change are discarded to the open market. So remember earlier I said you could maybe buy them from the bank pool? Well, that's how. So if you had three trains and they go up to the here, to the five, well, you now lose a train if it didn't rust, which we still got to talk about, then it's discarded any additional above those two, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about rusting trains before we talk about forced train buying. Let's say I'm happily operating along as we go along here and all the threes are bought and then somebody, maybe myself or someone else, buys a four train. What happens at that point? Well, the moment the first four train is bought, you'll notice it says rust by a four train. So what does that mean? It means we take this, we <laughs> tear it up. Not really, we just, it's out of the game. So if that company didn't also have a three and somebody else bought this four, it now has no choo-choo and it's sad. All right, so, all it, so it's possible that a company may have multiple two trains. So let's say like so, and somebody buys that four train. Oh yeah, all those, those go away. It's now trainless and that's sad. However, it, maybe it bought the four train. But if it also had a three train along with those two trains, that's fine. It, can, it still has a train. We're good, even though the twos rusted. Fours rust the twos, sixes rust the threes, and so on and so forth. And you'll notice that the four is rusted by a diesel. Okay? And rusted means eventually or immediately obsolete, goes away, out of the game, Bye bye So, going back to our example, somebody really rudely bought this four train and I'm now trainless. If a company has no train, it must buy a train during its operating round, at the end of its operating round. If it cannot afford one, the company president must make up the difference. So if it has plenty of money, okay, what's the, well, the four trains just popped, we're gonna pay $300 out of the company coffers and it's going to buy a four train. Okay, no harm, no foul. But let's say it only had 200 bucks and it doesn't have the money to be able to buy that four train. So what happens at that point? The company president, you know I'm the president because I have the president's share right here. I have to come out of pocket to make up the difference. So what's going to happen? I'm going to take all the money that's in that company. I'm going to put it over here into my personal cash. This is the only time this is ever done. Then I'm going to add in whatever money difference I have to, to be able to buy the train. This comes out of my pocket they get the train and the company is left with no money. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, let's say I am doing really badly for whatever reason. Company only has 200 bucks and I have no cash or I don't have $100. Let's say I only have 40 bucks, okay? And the current share value, oof, I'm doing really poorly. Let's say the current share value of the red company is at 55. 
I must sell some shares of companies and let's say my portfolio looks something along the lines of this and the blue company is currently valued at 65 and the red company is currently valued at 55. In that case, I have 40 bucks. I could either choose to sell this blue share that gives me 60 bucks plus this 40 makes up the difference that the company needs to now be able to buy that four train as I did earlier. But I lost that share, that share goes into the bank pool. Or I could sell a share of red, but that's only 55 bucks, which means 50 or 95, I'm five bucks short. Now I have a choice. I could sell another share of red or I could sell that share of blue. It is entirely my choice how I mix that up. However, you can only sell to get enough money to what you need. Even though selling two shares would be a total of $110, which is technically more than I need, selling one share wasn't enough, so I have to sell the second share. Doing so, if I sold two shares of red, whoop, that drops two. If I sell that share of blue, it would drop down. If blue were already ledged, meaning it's sitting here, it physically cannot drop, hey, it doesn't affect the share price at all. Okay? Presidency cannot swap hands during an emergency force buy. Okay? Let me stress that again. The presidency of a company cannot change during the, the forced train buy. Therefore, if a player cannot generate enough cash to buy a train, they go bankrupt. Game ends immediately. Okay? Diesel trains are available, like I said, after the first six train has been bought. Ah, no. Ah, there you go. I misspoke earlier. Sorry. It's not when the last five is bought. It's when the first six is bought. Then the diesels are available with the same rules as I mentioned. That's it. That's the whole game. The game ends immediately when a player goes bankrupt, as I just said, or if the bank breaks, runs out of money. Players finish that set of operating rounds it's currently in, using extra money added onto the bank, and then the game ends. The winner is the player with the highest valued personal portfolio, which is cash on hand, shares owned, those get cashed out. Money in the company treasury, whatever money is left, in the company treasury, stays in the company treasury, that is not your money. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right? Most money wins. If the game doesn't end in bankruptcy, we're likely, and by likely, I mean that we're going to, and we're, we will, going to calculate on a piece of paper the last set of operating rounds when we all agree that the bank is going to run out of money. You'll see that at the end, I'm sure, unless we go bankrupt. And last but not least, good luck. Have fun. Mm -hmm. That's it. Go for it. Ellen's going to take a break for a second, and we're going to go ahead and set everything back up and fix all of my disaster out here. Are there any questions locally? No. No. Any questions in the peanut gallery that you guys saw? No. Everything was no, it's going to set the first six thing, but you got it. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, good deal. Let's clear all these yep. off. Let's give everybody these. I will bring the cameras Red. up here shortly. And get me something to drink. Yeah, All I think right. you get a round of applause for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's the best I can do. <laughs> All right, see. so let's see. This oh. will, yep. Put I guess let me just put them in the middle. Right there. There. Is that good? Or should I put uh, them um, the... You know what? We're right. actually, why don't we do them off oh, yeah. okay. to where we yeah, can see them works. clearly over there. There. Let me make sure I'm organizing all of that disaster that I just did for examples. There. There. Here. Oh, uh, yeah, I got it. The two trains. Oh, yes. Two all right, and we are going to take these off screen now to give us a little bit of room to be able to, for Alan and myself. All right, so everybody should have a set of colors. They mm -hmm. do, we're good there. We're just gonna have these for when companies start. There, no, go there. Oh, right, privates, I guess we'll go over Yeah, we're going to go over those here yeah. shortly. Uh, how much should we start with? Sorry, I screwed everything up. 390. So 390, okay, so three. 
20, 40. Yeah, it's going to mess me up that greens are 20s, but they should <laughs> be, but... Okay, so 3, what is that, 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 50, 70, 90. Okay, all this goes back into the bank. A moment, and I will bring everything up, and then we will go over all the privates and the special rules with them. Whew. There we go. I think that's 390. Check my math. 60, 70, 80. That looks like 90 to me. Good enough for government. Here we go.